biohacking is really cutting edge. In fact, the Quantified Self meetups and the Quantified Self conference, I'm, I'm a huge fan of this group. The Quantified Self people have definitely been described as the homebrew computer club. These are the guys who are pushing limits of getting data off the body, putting it into big data repositories, crunching the numbers, and then figuring out what's going on. So you might figure out at the end of the month if you get all of your data about how much you weigh and how many steps you take and all sorts of other things like that. You feed that information into a big database, you visualize the data and go, ah, it turns out you know, if I, if I skip lunch on Thursdays, I'm much happier or, or whatever else it is. But it's an unconscious behavior that you control consciously. What biohackers are doing is taking it a step further. And we're saying that it's all about real-time feedback. It's terribly useful to understand the state of the human condition with quantified self data. But if you want to change something, your nervous system reacts faster than your conscious brain can think about things. We're talking about the reptilian brain and the mammalian brain, the parts of the, like your brainstem, things that you don't have control over unless you train them. So we're talking about this under 350 millisecond feedback. And what everyone in this room is learning how to do is how to change the spacing between their heartbeats, which it just so happens is a way to turn off your brainstem sympathetic nervous system response. If you feel a fight or flight response for no good reason, you're a normal human being because fight or flight responses don't usually have good reasons. They're there to protect animals from tigers and we're not really in that world anymore. So if your email that never stops and keeps, keeps stalking you <laughs> is giving you a fight or flight response, well, you can sit there and be stressed all the time and die earlier, or you can learn to tell your nervous system to take a deep breath. And that's not as easy as just taking a deep breath. There's a specific thing you do, it's a switch in your head that isn't labeled yet. We're labeling that switch for our nervous systems so we can consciously, with intention, turn stress on and off not that we don't feel anything, you feel, uh, you feel good all the time. And when you catch yourself going into a stress mode for no good reason, you say, I'm going to stop doing that. But if there's a mugger across the street coming towards you, you go into stress mode for good reason and you stay there just like a healthy person should. The Bulletproof Executive is a kind of, it's a blog where I wanted to share my experience. I spent more than a quarter million dollars upgrading my health. I've lost 100 pounds, I've raised my IQ by more than 20 points, lowered my stress level, lowered my biological age, dramatically decreased inflammation in my body, just had all this transformation while being a successful Silicon Valley entrepreneur. Like, I'm the first guy to sell any physical good over the internet. Like, I was an entrepreneur magazine when I was in my early 20s. So, like, I'm a high, a high success kind of guy, and the reason I could do all the things I've done is because I was fortunate enough to do well as a young man, so I could spend a quarter million dollars basically getting healthy and then going beyond health. And it's not fair that I could spend a quarter million dollars, even though I probably wasted half of it on stuff that didn't work as well as I would have liked. But the, the knowledge that I picked up there, I felt that I should share that. And that's why the blog is essentially free. <laughs> All the information is there. The infographic is uh, more than, uh, we'll, we'll say several hundred references went into making the infographic for the Bulletproof Diet alone. And I get emails every day from entrepreneurs and investors and people who are like, oh, I just lost 30 pounds. I lost 40 pounds in two months. I was never hungry and my brain feels like it's never felt before. I can't believe my levels of focus. I'm like, there you go. Like, that's what it's about. In order to keep the blog going, I realized, you know, it, it takes a lot. We're ranked in the top 13,000 websites in the U.S. and in the top 40,000 globally. Like, it's, it's become a big website. And it's because the info is high integrity, it's science-based, and it's free. So to do that, I said, coffee is my number one problem. I love coffee. I've been a coffee guy forever. I gave up coffee for five years because every time I drank it, I would feel great, and then I'd feel crappy. And I'd get, like, sore joints sometimes. I'd get a headache. I'd feel tense right here. So I hacked coffee and came up with this whole process. It's been a dream for years to create the process and actually bring it to the market. So I did it thinking at least I can drink my own coffee and know with 100% certainty that this is the highest performance coffee there is. And I started sharing it and it's become popular. People like the coffee because they can feel the difference and it's you know, two bucks a bag more than you're gonna spend at any normal coffee store. Flavor is important and good processing that maybe you can't tell in the flavor, but the way you feel is the cleanness you, you get from it. It's, it's in use by celebrities, uh, MMA athletes are drinking the stuff. Like it's, it's used as a performance enhancing substance like coffee should be. There are a lot of really passionate coffee people. I, I love people who brew good coffee. There are problems though. We focus so much on the roast because it's easy to control. So some green coffee arrives <laughs> and no one thinks about well, how did it arrive? Was it in a burlap bag that was getting washed with diesel fumes and humidity in a container ship? The answer is if it's from a large coffee chain, yeah. 
And then you look at, okay, well, how many different plantations did the coffee in your cup come from? And if you're drinking mass market coffee, potentially thousands. They mix huge amounts of coffee and they blend them to make them taste about good. And then they usually overcook it because it's hard to get good quality, clean coffee that holds a medium roast and tastes good. Medium roast is healthier than the dark roast. And the dark roast is something a large company has trained the American population to enjoy, even though it's less healthy. And they do it because it hides the acid taste in the coffee because the coffee isn't very good. So what I did is I went through this whole process and said, how do I stop the formation of histamine in coffee? People don't know this, but there is histamine in coffee. Histamine increases your allergic response, right? So you drink coffee, you might get a little sore throat, a little stuffy sometimes, not every time, because it's variable on a per cup basis. You might get mycotoxins, which happens when they ferment the coffee. Half, actually 91.3% or 0 0.7, 91.7% of South American coffee in a recent study had toxic mold in it. And people say, oh, that can't be such a big deal. Well, I'm sorry. The data that I have from human performance says that it is a big deal, and especially for feeling clear up here. That's why I use it. I have an author of Singularity Rising, a guy that I've never met, sent me a copy of his book recently. This is a book about how artificial intelligence will change investing. And in the middle of it, on page 100 something, in the middle it says, thank you Dave Asprey of the Bulletproof Executive for Bulletproof Coffee, because I was able to cut my Adderall dose in half thanks to the recipe, which is grass-fed butter, plus something I have on the site called medium chain triglyceride, or MCT oil, plus, yeah, plus the, uh, the coffee. And the coffee's called Upgraded Coffee. And my God, if you try that, you will not go back because your brain operates at a different level.